Hi, I'm Cora. Hi, I'm Julian. We are, we are so, so excited, excited to share what we know about composting. So, Cora, what is composting? Basically, a soil superhero. We take a big pile of dried and green plants, such as leaves, straw, and wood chips. In a few months, the compost pile decomposes into a rich nutrient soil. Billions of tiny creatures help with this breakdown, including worms, fungus, and bacteria. Compost is very rich in nutrients and can be used in our garden, at home, school, and in our agricultural fields to grow more fruits and vegetables. Compost superpowers help restore our soil. Why should we compost? Composting helps keep stuff out of the landfill. The landfill is just a mountain made of our trash. Keeping stuff out of the landfill is called diversion. We divert food scraps and garden waste from the landfill. Any material that was once alive is considered organic material. We call these organics. That doesn't mean the material was produced without pesticides. What it means is that it will break down naturally once it is no longer in use. When we throw our food into the garbage, it goes directly to the landfill to be buried forever. When leftover food breaks down in the landfill, it produces a gas called methane. You're right, and did you know that methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming? When we compost, we are reducing the methane generated. We are also reducing the amount of trash buried at our landfill and leaving more space for future generations. All of the trash from Salinas to King City is driven to the Johnson Canyon landfill just outside of Gonzales. When we compost, we reduce our household trash by about 600 pounds per year. That's the weight of a grizzly bear. That's super cool. And by composting, you are not only decreasing the amount of trash you throw out, you are creating really nutritious soil, which is awesome for your garden. It's a full circle. Food is grown in a healthy soil. We eat the food, then the food scraps are composted back into the soil, and the cycle continues. But how do we do it? How does it work? Everything living needs all of these four things. Carbon, nitrogen, air and water. We call them the big four. I know about air and water, but what the heck are carbon and nitrogen? Carbon and nitrogen are the building blocks of life. In a compost pile, we want to add items that have a high concentration of carbon and nitrogen. We find lots of carbon in brown plant material, woody pruning, fallen leaves, straw, and newspaper. We find lots of nitrogen in green materials, food scraps, coffee grounds, lawn clippings, and green plants. With composting, you should have a half and half mix of carbon to nitrogen. That's so cool. The combo of carbon, nitrogen, air, and water together creates the perfect environment for organic material to break down. Once organic material starts to break down, a bunch of different macroorganisms come at different stages to help the process along, and then, just like that, you have compost. Now let's talk about vermicompost. Worm composting or vermicomposting is when we let worms eat our food scraps. Worms love to eat leftover fruit, vegetables, and grains. They will happily turn it into some of the best fertilizer on Earth. Vermicomposting is a fascinating, fun, and easy way to recycle your food scraps. I bet you don't know what worm casting is. I do. It's the soil superhero that has all the nutrients, and they call it black gold. But it's really just worm poop. <laughs> that may be true, but the worm's guts do a great job of breaking down our food scraps and turning them into high-quality soil nutrients. A worm bin requires very little work, produces no bad smells, and provides worm castings that help plants grow healthy. Now, let's learn about our decomposer worms. Compost worms are called red worms or red wigglers. They are different from the earthworms you normally find in the ground. These worms have a big appetite reproduce quickly, and grow well in small spaces. Did you know they can eat more than half their own weight in food every day? Common earthworms and night crawlers do not survive well in bins since they normally live under the soil surface. One pound of red worms is all you need to get started. Time for a red wiggler pop quiz. How many hearts do red wiggler worms have? 
You're right. Red wiggler worms have five hearts. Composting can one reduce how much garbage your family sends to the landfill, which saves space for the future and helps reduce greenhouse gases. Two helps plants grow stronger and healthier. Three helps soils keep water in and reduce erosion. And four, it benefits the environment by recycling valuable organic materials. Worms like to eat the same stuff we eat, only they are not as picky. They like stale bread, apple cores, lettuce trimmings, coffee grounds, and non-greasy leftovers. These are just some of the foods that we usually throw away. Worms prefer smaller sized scraps and will eat through them more quickly than larger or whole pieces of food. After the first feeding, feed the worms weekly. Start out with about a quarter food scraps each week. Don't give them too much citrus. Citrus should be no more than one fifth of the total worm food or you'll end up with worm ceviche, but you can put as much citrus as you have into your regular compost pile. I like to think of worms as vegan vampires. Right, they will die in the sun and don't eat meat. Although red wigglers don't drink blood, so they are only kind of like vampires. So Julian, how do we make a worm bin? It is not as hard as you think. First, we start by adding four to six inches of wet bedding material. Then make a hole in the middle of the bedding. Add one pound of worms and one pound of food waste. After setting up the first bedding, feed the worms weekly, starting with about a quart of food scraps per week, and moisten the bin at least once a week. As the worms multiply, you can add larger quantities of food scraps. After a few months, you can add about an inch of food scraps every week. Are you wondering about flies and smells? To avoid fruit flies and odors, bury food under a top layer of bedding. Do not dump and run. If your worm bin starts to smell bad, it could be a sign that you're adding more food than the worms can eat. If too much food is added, it can even heat it up and kill the worms. Stop feeding for a while, and when most of the food has been eaten, start feeding again. Great, let's explore some of the decomposers while we play worm bingo and describe some of the critter activities in the composting systems. Sow bugs, or roly polies, have chewing and rasping mouth parts. They are like a shredding machine that will break down the plants and material into small particles. Millipedes feed on decomposing organic waste. Snails feed on plants by scraping off the tissue. Airwigs or pincher bugs mainly feed on dead and living insects, mosses, lichens, algae, and fungi. Red worms or red wigglers break down food waste and bedding material and with the help of the other decomposers and microorganisms, turn it into a nutrient-rich soil compost called castings. We need at least 2,000 worms to eat one pound of food waste per day. My family doesn't compost at home. What can I do? If you are not composting at home, you can put your food scraps into the yard waste cart. If you live in an apartment, ask your adults to check with the landlord to find out what bin to use or let them know to contact your friends at SVR to get help setting up the program. Here's how we can recycle our food scraps. Place a container in your kitchen to collect food scraps. We put ours in a green compost bucket. The label shows what we can put in the yard waste cart, but you don't have to use this compost kitchen pail. You can use whatever works at your house like an empty container. Everyone should remember that trash like paper plates, napkins, plastic forks, forks, and spoons go into the trash. Yes, clean and dry metal, plastic, paper, and glass go into the mix recycling. Same rules apply at school. The green bin at your school is to collect leftover food. Remember to put all the wrappers in the trash. Remember, if it grows, it goes in the green bin. Or if the ingredients grew, it goes in the green bin. If only pizza grew on trees, that'd be the life. You can also compost cooked meats, eggs, yogurt, bread, nuts, seafood, and shells. 
basically anything you can eat can go into a compost bucket. What does not go in the compost bucket? No plastic, no wrappers, no metal, no glass, no wood, no paper, no raw meat, grease, liquids, or oils. All the food waste bins get emptied into the large compost cart and the food waste truck comes to pick it up and takes it to the composting facility located in Gonzales. When the food scraps get to the composting facility, it will be blended up with the yard waste to make compost. The compost blend will take about three months to be totally composted. What can compost be used for? After our compost is ready, it goes to our ag fields or school gardens to grow more nutritious food. Thank, Thank you for learning about compost with us today. I challenge you to go teach someone something you learned today. Challenge accepted. Your turn. Yeah.